You know, as was the case when President Trump took office, he identified North Korea as the greatest threat to U.S. national security. The U.S. Security Council is meeting to discuss North Korea's nuclear provocations. Pyongyang made the rare decision to send its ambassador to the event, most likely to protest a gathering's agenda with a defiant speech claiming the regime is a rightful nuclear power. Park Jun provides a glimpse of how the session could unfold. The U.S. is set to further ramp up the pressure on North Korea at the United Nations, where the North is also set to be making a rare appearance. The State Department says Secretary of State Rex Tillerson will seek to rally members of the UN Security Council on Friday to turn the screw on Pyongyang. Tillerson is slated to take part in a Security Council ministerial briefing regarding North Korea's nuclear weapons program. State Department spokesperson Heather Nauert says Tillerson will reaffirm the Trump administration's push for maximum pressure on Pyongyang so that it gives up its weapons programs. And during the discussions, he is also expected to confront North Korea's envoy. North Korea said it will send its UN ambassador to the event through an email from Cho Jong Chol, the spokesperson at the North Korean mission. During his rare appearance at the council meeting, Ambassador Cha Song Nam is expected to deliver a speech, possibly on how North Korea is a full-fledged nuclear power and how it will not give up its nuclear program. He met UN official Jeffrey Feldman on Thursday to follow up on the UN official's visit to Pyongyang last weekend. North Korea is not a member of the UN Security Council, but it made a request on Thursday to attend the event as a participating nation. The move is seen as a highly exceptional case, raising speculation that its envoy may be planning to make strong and determined remarks on the meeting's agenda. Ahead of the event, North Korea's state-run Korean Central News Agency lashed out at the U.S. for convening the meeting. The report said the meeting is none other than a desperate measure plotted by the U.S. being terrified by the North State nuclear force. In a separate broadcast, the North stammed the U.S. over the possible use of a naval blockade, warning such a move could drive the situation on the Korean Peninsula to the brink of war. Well, good afternoon, all, and do want to again thank the government of Japan for using their opportunity at the chair to convene today's session on uh, North Korea. Also appreciate Secretary uh, Gutierrez's comments and framing of the the situation for us. You know, as was the case when President Trump took office, he identified North Korea as the greatest threat to U.S. national security. And regrettably, 11 months later, not much has changed. If anything, the situation perhaps has worsened. I think, in in the wake, in particular, of the most recent North Korean missile test, a very a dangerous test, one which was noted by others, actually, you know, it was a real threat to civilization security, but again demonstrates the total disregard North Korea has, not just for the United States' uh, view on this, but for the view of the entire international community. And I think that was clearly expressed by the members of the Security Council today. We simply cannot uh, continue to accept the progress of North Korea's program. We will maintain the pressure campaign, and in fact, we undertake efforts to increase the effectiveness of the pressure campaign, both through a combination of the sanctions regime, full implementation and compliance of the sanction regime, as well as unilateral actions on the part of many, many countries to send the message to North Korea through diplomatic uh, steps as well as economic steps that we do not accept the pathway you're on. We hope that this pressure campaign will. Cause North Korea to alter its course, re-examine whether this truly is going to lead to a more secure, uh, more security for the regime, uh, and whether it is, is possible for them to even sustain an economy if they continue the path they're on. We're going to continue our diplomatic efforts. Those options remain open until other things may foreclose the diplomatic option. And with that, I'll stop there, and I think we can take a couple of questions, perhaps. Thank you, Secretary Tillerson. Michelle Nichols from Reuters.、Uh, we have heard a lot from you this morning about North Korea. I'd like to ask you about Myanmar. As you're aware, earlier this week, two Reuters journalists were arrested, and their whereabouts are unknown. What is the U.S. government doing to pressure Myanmar for their release? And is the U.S. considering further sanctions on Myanmar over human rights abuses? Well, our 
local representatives at the mission in Myanmar, at the embassy, are expressing our concerns over the detention of, of individuals, demanding their immediate release or information as to the circumstances around their disappearance. Uh, we are continuing to examine the circumstances around all of the events since the August attacks that have led to the enormous migration of people out of Myanmar uh, and have already identified one individual and we are examining other possible individuals to hold responsible for targeted sanctions from the U.S. How important is a free press in Myanmar? Well, a free press is vital to Myanmar's transition and becoming a viable democracy. And we want Myanmar's democracy to succeed. We know it is a process that they need to work through. This particular crisis is a real test of whether they are going to be able to affect a successful journey to democracy. Mr. Secretary, uh, you previously said that a precondition to talks with North Korea is the regime agreeing to give up its nuclear and ballistic missile capabilities. On Tuesday, you said that wasn't realistic. Uh, and today, you didn't mention the issue at all, despite what was in your prepared remarks. Does it re remain a precondition for the United States? Um, and are you and President Trump on the same page on whether and when to engage in talks? Now, the President's policy on North Korea is quite clear, and there's no daylight at all between the President's policy and the pursuit of that policy. And the President, I think, has been very clear that we are going to lead this pressure campaign, we're going to unite the international community, and we're going to keep the pressure as, as much as we can and increase it where possible. Most recently, the President called President Xi personally and asked him to, for China to cut the oil supplies off to North Korea to increase this pressure. That is intended to lead to diplomatic talks. In the meantime, the President has been very clear militarily he, we are going to be prepared should something go wrong, and our military is prepared. With respect to the talks, the pre we are not going to accept preconditions. You heard others have called for freeze for freeze. We do not accept a freeze for freeze as a precondition to talks. We do not accept any relaxing of the sanctions regime as a precondition of talks. We do not accept the resumption of humanitarian assistance as a precondition of talks. So we are not going to accept preconditions for these talks. But as I indicated in my remarks, our communication, communication channels remain open. North Korea knows they're open. They know where the door is. They know where to walk through that door when they want to talk. Thank you. U.N. Undersecretary for Political Affairs Jeffrey Feltman told reporters in New York his talks in Pyongyang last week with senior North Korean officials found common ground on the need to prevent war over its nuclear and missile programs, but little else. North Korean interlocutors agreed it was important to, to prevent war. How we do that was the topic of 15 plus hours of discussions. The people who we met listened carefully to our arguments. They explored our thinking. They asked questions. They, they argued with us. But ultimately, they have to take what we said and talk about it internally, talk about it with their leadership. So I, that's why I'm reluctant to say now what is the impact of our visit, because they need time to digest and consider how they will respond to our message. Feltman said he believes the door to a diplomatic solution has been left ajar and hopes the door to a diplomatic solution will be opened wide. He told them the international community is committed to a peaceful solution, but united in opposition to North Tillerson said the United States will not tolerate a nuclear-armed North Korea, but he said such talks could be held after a period of quiet without nuclear or missile testing. It is unclear whether President Donald Trump, who has said talking with North Korea would be a waste of time, gave his approval to the speech to the Atlantic Council think tank. But Korea Society Senior Director of Policy Stephen Norper tells VOA's Victor Beatty such a position is long overdue and a step forward in easing tensions. For the United States to basically be in the position of saying that it's willing to come to the table and talk without those preconditions on North Korea means that negotiations much more likely. The prior situation, less so if it meant that they had to give that up as part of the precondition to come to the table. At this point, the United States is saying, come and we'll talk from there. He also uh, mentioned that North Korea must show restraint. Quote, it's going to be tough to talk if in the middle of our talks North Korea decides to test another device, so we continue to indicate to them that we need a period of quiet. You need to tell us 
you want to talk. North Korea has indicated it's not interested in talking, is it? North Korea has held off on some of its testing. Up until the November 29th test, there had been almost a 75-day hiatus, and so Washington is signaling that it wants to see a similar type of pause in missile and nuclear activity to show seriousness to get to the table to negotiate. Tillerson disclosed that the U.S. has been in discussions with China about how to secure North Korea's nuclear weapons in the event the government collapses. Well, I think what he's trying to do is signal a few things. He's saying that there's muscle behind the diplomacy. So he reiterated that the U.S. has military capabilities, He noted that there is the opportunity to step up sanctions even further, and he noted that there's been this conversation with China over the nuclear stockpile issue and that the U.S., if it went forward, would then go back beyond the uh, 38th parallel into South Korean territory to, to provide China some sort of security assurance. And all of that is designed to signal to North Korea that the U.S. is dealing with a portfolio of options. But it appears that negotiation now is certainly at the fore and a more realistic thing to be talking about today. With regard to a dialogue without precondition, do you think President Trump backs that view? I wouldn't be the person to answer that. Secretary Tillerson and President Trump are the only two people who know that answer, but one would assume with such a public address that Secretary Tillerson was going out and making an advance for negotiation, and one would assume that's coordinated with the White House. Stephen Norper said Jeffrey Feltman's visit to North Korea, the first by a senior UN diplomat since 2011, provides an opening to a potential mediation role because Feltman met with Foreign Minister Ri hong Yo, who, Norper said, has the ear of leader Kim Jong-un. Ahead of the Tillerson speech, Kim announced plans to develop more nuclear weapons and decorated those involved in developing the latest intercontinental ballistic missile.